As the 21st century rolled around and India's Millennium Goals were announced to the world, three of the eight major goals revolved around healthcare. Fifteen years since then, India has achieved success in some. While in other goals, there is still much to be done. With hospitals training at the seams to meet the needs of India's billion-strong population, how has information and communication technology stepped in to assist our medical personnel? The answer involves everything from satellites in orbit to the humble mobile phone. Healthcare in 21st century India is paradoxical. On one hand, India is a hub for medical tourism. Its best hospitals and medical practitioners highly sought, not just by Indians, but the world. On the other hand, primary and basic healthcare is still a pipe dream for many who live in poverty or in remote areas away from big cities. Equally high standards of healthcare for all is still a challenge. One that is made acute by two factors a massive demand for medical services and sheer numbers of those in need. Two, a shortfall of resources, both in numbers of qualified doctors as well as well-equipped modern hospitals and medical infrastructure. In the year 2000, just as India's Millennium Development Goals were announced, Indian Healthcare ventured into the brave new world of ICT through telemedicine. Using telemedicine, patients could access quality health care, no matter how far away they were located from doctors. Yes, sir. One of the earliest ways to bridge this distance was satellite communication, enabled by the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO. Insat satellites were charged with connecting district hospitals with centers of excellence and specialty hospitals in big cities. Now, no matter how remote the location, satellite links provided connectivity. While special computer software and hardware were installed at the patient and specialty end. I can see that the spine is very stiff. Yeah, yeah. He's actually bending his hip and knee. Yeah, yeah. While the satellite model of telemedicine created many new virtual OPDs, it did not become as prolific as expected over the next decade and a half. One of the biggest impediments in it becoming a full success has been the cost. Telemedicine relied on satellites. In India, we relied on ISRO satellites. We required very expensive te technological equipment to interface with those satellites and we required end-to-end -end connection using the same equipment. Paradoxically, as costs of setting up satellite-based telemedicine units shot up, costs of other internet-based communication applications plummeted. They were applications that many of us used to chat with our friends and family. At any given time of the day, the Trauma Centre at Delhi's All India Institute of Medical Sciences is buzzing. This is where some of the most serious emergency cases are admitted. It is also where a first of its kind telemedicine is being practiced. Welcome to near zero cost telemedicine. And the arrival was the hypotensive. Uh, so this is not a fresh case. Uh, it's an yeah. old case of RTA. The case was discussed with Dr. Amit Gupta. Okay. We uh, receive very complicated cases. And also we have issues regarding admissions. We have limited number of beds. So it's always better to consult a senior doctor to know which patients to receive. And if any definitive care is required, how to go about it. What would, what would be our priority and which patients to get admission and which we can refer to other hospitals. Using a simple laptop and free software like Skype that allows video calls, a senior doctor can examine a patient, 
without even being present in the ward. So we keep the patient uh, till around 7 o'clock and then discharge. We used to have less faculty in the emergency department at Ames Trauma Center, but I have to give cover, faculty cover round the clock, which is sometimes become impossible physically. So we thought why not to use technology to be present without being present. Now, thanks to free calling applications, the best of doctors are available nearly 24-7 at extremely low costs to the hospital. Initial survey, he was found to have patent airway, breathing was labelled. After having audio-visual system through Skype, we can uh, describe the injury and condition of the patient with visual system more accurately. So it helps in uh, taking decisions and um, better management of the patient. Skype was my friend. So I took another consultant as a Skype, you know, mediator. So I could reach my patients and they what, what patients want. They want a senior consultant's expert advice so that their juniors can take care of them when he is not present. Low cost of free communication software and even emails have created a virtual OPD where an increasing number of patients are tapping into India's best healthcare from any part of the country. With a hospital like Ames receiving an average of 3 million patients annually, ICT has a big role to play in efficient patient care. Which is why Ames has become the first government hospital in India to go completely digital with online registration and generation of universal health identification number or UHID, electronic medical records or EMR, which can be accessed securely and confidentially by on-call doctors, specialists, nurses and labs, an integrated hospital information system that carries real-time updates about each patient and hospital resources. India's first fax or picture archiving and communication system that allows digital sharing of medical and radio images like MRIs, X-rays, CT scans, etc. India's first group of nursing informatics specialists and a constantly refreshed public display system to ease the minds of patients and their companions. I am glad to tell you that now NIC is on board with us. They are helping us uh, in developing uh, this uh, hospital information system partly like online registration, providing UHID, Universal uh, Health ID. Now we are giving to every patient and that is linked to investigations, that is linked to follow-up, that is linked to admission. So that is huge advantage. Behind the scenes, the NIC or National Informatics Centre has been hard at work developing an easy-to-use system that anyone can use. You can see the first link that's popping up is our portal. It's made in such a beautiful way that easy for any common man to navigate. If a patient needs an appointment, his kit or kin can come here, take an appointment, get the appointment ready and walk off. Second is lab reports. If you have gone to any hospital, the doctor has prescribed some tests for you and those tests have already been done. Now you need to see the reports. Normally what happens, you walk all the way to the hospital, take those reports. Now with a simple, we call it as a unique hospital ID, you can just put it here. It's secure. It comes through an OTP pin so that nobody else can see your reports and you can see the reports here. Similarly, there are so many blood banks across the country. At times you want to know what is the blood availability say in my particular hospital or in my region. So we have a tab here which says blood availability. And in Delhi, it will populate all these hospitals. So you have Ames, you have RML, you have some children hospital, your LHMC, Saftajang hospital. So let's take Ames. And these are all the department in Ames that are currently offering online appointment. So what I'm being shown here is a calendar. The calendar is nothing but the availability of appointments for that department for the whole month. And I say book the appointment. And now my appointment is booked for December, 10th December. And this is my appointment ID. 
and this is the unique health identification number given by aims to me NIC ka ek product hai e hospital NIC has a product called e hospital it's uh, operational in approximately 50 hospitals it means both the server and databases are within the hospital people can access its services from the hospital counter it means as a common man i have to go to the hospital to access it mujhe pata nahi hai jis doctor ko main dikhane ke liye ja raha hu i don't know beforehand whether the doctor i need to see is available or if i'll get an appointment i can only access this information when i visit the hospital the e hospital system which has been installed in aims new delhi should be converted into an appointment system so that the public can benefit from it but such digital advantages aren't for big city hospitals alone this is ganiari village in chatisgarh's bilaspur region it's home to some of india's most underserved rural and tribal communities bada bada dur se laut ke aa rahe hamar garibi we come from far off it's a poor region not for wealthy people we live in jungle hum log pareshan ho chuke hain we are fed up we have shown in government and private hospitals we have gone till bhopal but we still couldn't understand the problem ganiari is also home to the clinics of jan swasthya sahyog or jss an organization that's bringing digital efficiency to those who need it the most this program that started uh, with the broad objective of providing uh, low cost and yet high quality care for the poor with equity as its underpin that uh, the health care for uh, the poor has to be of the same quality as anyone who's not poor just like aims jss knew that digitizing medical records and key hospital processes could go a long way in creating effective patient care and so with the help of ict experts they devised a package called bamini we have built uh, an integrated hospital system plus an emr um it we we call it bamini and uh, it is actually it's a combination of multiple open source products which we have integrated among themselves and uh, we have enhanced the usability of some of these products to fit into a resource constrained environment people with have which who have low literacy who are able to use these things very easily Bamini is a bouquet of three different open source applications. Open MRS to store medical records electronically. Open LS to manage lab processes and validate and store lab reports. Odoo to manage accounts, inventory and administrative operations. Each of these open source applications is adapted to the rural setting. the challenges here are different and uh, you have to adapt the technology to the local context bamini does not rely on internet networks that fail to reach remote areas it also uses very simple and resilient technologies technologies like touchpad devices one of the reasons why we went with touch is to kind of reduce the barrier for people who are not computer savvy and we have paid a lot of attention to making the user interface the experience for the user very simple for the jss which caters to 2500 villages in the district ict has been a life saver in managing patient load and providing equitable healthcare but there's been an added advantage too with ICT as a critical link to upgrading the future what's next for indian healthcare join us after the break to find out telemedicine in india has come a long way in the last two decades 
from high cost satellite based technologies to freely available social networking applications. The next stage of ICT innovation is web based healthcare applications that aren't solely about video calls and messaging but offer a full bouquet of services exclusively for the medical world. In short, this is the era of health informatics and that's where eSanjeevani comes in. Developed by Mohali's Centre for Development of Advanced Computing or CDAC, eSanjeevani can be accessed on the internet as easily as any other social media site. The entire system is based on a web-based model, right? So we have a client-server architecture. So the application resides on a server and we have it hosted on our website. That's www.esanjeevani.in. So the users can access that site, get themselves registered, start using it and start registering patients on that. So patients can also get access to it anytime again by logging into the system at the same website and they can seek an opinion with the doctors. Once logged in, patients can book online appointments, have teleconsultations with doctors. Doctors and laboratories can generate and share electronic medical reports or EMRs. They can also pick up readings and images directly from machines like MRI, microscopes, film scanners, etc. Perhaps the biggest advantage of eSanjeevani is that it allows even remote patients to connect with specialists. We are using the different channels for the communication. It may be the landline communication we are using or it may be the wireless communication what we are using. And the cost of this technology is reducing nowadays. So that benefit will also come into the picture. eSanjeevani is a completely indigenous service which understands the special needs of Indian healthcare. It is easy to use and has a simple GUI or graphical user interface that even those who aren't computer savvy can operate. This makes it ideal for use even across rural India and those centres where computer literacy is still developing. Most importantly, it doesn't rely on specialised equipment and can be installed in mobile healthcare units that can travel to areas which are remote or which don't have big hospital setups. SIDAC has uh, implemented the telemedicine network in the Punjab. The 27 uh, district has been covered into that. And uh, in Himachal Pradesh, it was a good implementation where uh, we put up the telemedicine system at the places which are the uh, very difficult to reach, difficult terrains. Telemedicine system has been uh, implemented. Recently, we implemented this facility in the northeastern area. So we are facilitating for the north northeastern area where we had put this facility for the Kachar Cancer Hospital. So we are using at that place. In the Rajasthan also, we had put up this facility. So means looking into this facility, we have put many places where the people are getting benefited out of this. But in the day and age, where every patient may not have computers, they still possess mobile phones. And so, there's a new focus on healthcare through mobile data. And this time, it's not just about cure, but also prevention. This is M. Swasthya, a dedicated health and wellness app that anyone with a smartphone can install. It helps monitor wellness and keeps personal records for diabetes parameters, blood sugar, weight and body mass index. It acts as a reminder for medication and vaccination. It connects patients to doctors, the nearest hospitals and emergency services. It helps you stay fit with apps for exercise and nutrition. It also helps you keep abreast of the latest in fitness trends and healthcare news. It is literally wellness in the palm of a person's hands. Mobile healthcare is evolving and the next generation of mobile health is what we see as ubiquitous computing or wearable sensors that we talk about. So we have these fitness trackers coming in, we have these wearless medical devices which are coming in, which could be used by individuals to manage and maintain their own personal health. With ICT bridging the gap between patient and doctor, the idea of virtual clinics is catching on. But no clinic or hospital is complete without diagnostic tools. At CDAC Mohali, technologists 
are hard at work to devise low cost, portable and easy to use devices to diagnose and monitor health parameters. A simple mouse becomes a wireless stethoscope that measures pulse and lung activity and converts it to digital formats that can be shared online. A small strap-on tool replaces the heavy ECG machines found in most hospitals. Here too, data can be shared digitally across large distances in almost real time. See, we started this technology in the year 1999 where the cost of the equipment available at that time was very high. With the evolution of the new technology, the cost is getting down day by day. So that reduction of the cost will help the poor people to get the benefit of this technology in their area. With such easy to use and inexpensive technologies, one can think of a future when no one will be denied quality health care. After the break, we'll look at how ICT is leading to a new wave of education and expertise in the healthcare sector. Quality healthcare for all is a millennium development goal for India. But one of the biggest challenges is shortage of qualified doctors, specialists and medical staff. But thanks to the tools of information and communication technology, this is slowly changing. Early age at first birth, multiparity, no socioeconomic status, at Delhi's All India Institute of Medical Sciences, a very special teaching session is in progress. In the studio is a specialist from AIMS. Using basic filming and broadcasting equipment, she is conducting a lecture with doctors and students in different medical colleges and hospitals of India. staging for found better than the patients who were Imaged and decided. AIMS is the premier institute of the country. So the doctors in AIMS faculty, their mandate is to spread education, awareness, not only in the country but outside the country. Rest outside the India, AIMS tele-education lectures are heard by medical personnel in 50 African countries as part of the Pan-African Network. More advanced is the presentation versus the prognosis. So it's very important for us to pick up the patients early. We are doing a network with the African countries and we are conducting lectures regularly in all specialties. Recently we did a lecture on the Ebola virus. At the heart of this unprecedented connectivity is the National Knowledge Network, an ultra high bandwidth fiber optic network that stretches out across India and abroad. NKN provides incredible speeds and data carrying capacity of over 1 gigabytes per second, making the sharing of heavy data faster and more efficient. Thanks to it, many new avenues for medical innovation, collaboration and education have opened up in healthcare. There are a lot of projects which people have now come out because the bandwidth is available. One of them is telemedicine which is going on right now actually. So they're going to implement telemedicine in about 160 colleges, medical colleges. About 200 hospitals are already on board, hospitals come medical colleges. So I'm sure that these projects can now kick off very fast because the connectivity component is taken care. So what they need to do is only bring in their specialization and start using it. And one of them is brain grid, we have cancer grid, like that we have multiple grids. Today, ICT is at the forefront of reducing barriers in healthcare, from conquering distances to innovating machines and building knowledge resources. As the virtual hospital evolves and spreads its networks, Indian healthcare, it seems, is well on its way to a fit future. Please send your suggestions and comments too. Vigyan Prasar, A50, Institutional Area, Sector 62, Noida, 201-309. You can also email us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.